with time running out on the state's emergency housing protections, that increases the need for response by local communities. New steps have already been taken by Mayor Walsh, including another round of rental assistance and the call for a pledge by landlords to tell us what's coming into play is the program manager of the Office of Housing Stability, Katie Ford. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Katie. Thank you for having me. Uh, Katie, the first thing I want to do is, uh, is there any sort of general advice you might have at this point for renters who have trouble paying and the moratorium runs out on Saturday, so what should they do next? Sure, so um, just basic uh, thing about the moratorium lifting on Saturday is a lot of people are going to receive a letter from their landlord that is called a notice to quit. And we need to make sure that this letter, um, that people know that this letter does not mean that you need to leave your apartment. So um, this letter will have a lot of strong language that'll tell you you need to leave in 14 days or 30 days. And just remember that only a judge can evict you. So what we've done is we've sent out a mailer to about 46,000 households, did a lot of research on which households to send that to. Um, and we have sent that mailer out in multiple languages to make sure that folks um, have access to resources, financial and legal resources, and a basic list of tenant rights um, before they get that letter from their landlord so they know that they do not need to move out. Now, I, I understand uh, when it comes to letters that uh, the mayor wants a city ordinance that would require landlords to spell out that kind of information as well. That's right. So the landlords actually wouldn't have to spell it out. Um, our, the Office of Housing Stability would actually draft the document that would just be included with the notice to quit. And the document would um, just simply list out basic rights, again, explaining that only a judge can evict you and also list the financial resources that would help the landlord because that those resources could help pay the back rent and keep that tenant stably housed. And it would also provide legal resources to the tenant, which is also uh, beneficial to the landlord as well. How much difference uh, does legal representation make for renters at least? It makes a big difference. Um, I think there was a study, uh, I might be wrong on the percentage, but I'm in the right range. About 7% of tenants are represented in court, in housing court right now, compared to um, over 70% of landlords are represented by an attorney. So what happens is, you know, landlords in, um, have to keep coming back to court because tenants will fill out agreements or sign on to agreements that they can't afford to do because they're worried about being stably housed. They'll waive their rights um, to a jury trial or to appeals. And that's just something that, you know, is really unacceptable. And um, that is why tenants really need access to counsel, which is something that, you know, the mayor has been pushing for and the legislature has um, been, you know, proposing. And so that is something that we've also been able to do at the Office of Housing Stability. We were able to use some BPD overtime funds that were allocated to us to add to Greater Boston Legal Service attorneys to our staff. And we think that that'll help us hopefully evict or prevent another 215 evictions or so. So we're excited to also offer that. And I know we might have covered this ground before, but, but explain the, the importance of avoiding an eviction, because even if a legal counsel cannot prevent a sort of a displacement from happening, uh, preventing an actual eviction can still make a big difference. Yes. Um, so preventing an actual eviction is, is huge. Uh, but the main thing that we're really trying to do is prevent people from going to court in the first place. Because as soon as you have a court record and you're a tenant and you're listed as a defendant on a housing court docket, people are not gonna go in and be like, oh, that happened during COVID, um, you know, we forgive you, we will rent to you. It's really a stain on your record and it is unfortunate that those records are not sealed. So um, that is something that we really are trying to advocate for landlords to do to make sure that they actually avoid court altogether, which is why we have this landlord pledge that we're really excited about that a lot of large landlords have signed on to, where they've agreed to abide by the CDC eviction moratorium, where they've agreed to um, accept city and state rental relief funds and work with their um, tenants on a reasonable payment plan before they um, in lieu of court action. So we are excited about that um, pledge. Some of the first uh, property owners to sign on to that were the large landlords. They have some resources that some of the small landlords don't have. So, so how workable is a pledge like that for someone who, let's say, owns just a three-decker and is, is dealing with the other two apartments? Right. So, you know, small landlords have really been hit hard by this eviction moratorium, and we hear from them a lot on our hotline. And, you know, the pledge might not be workable for the smaller landlords, but what the smaller landlords do have the opportunity to do is um, they can apply directly for emergency funding from the state through the rental relief funds now. 
They can also um, tell their tenants about our city rent relief fund so we can help them apply. And then the home center um, through the Department of Neighborhood Development, if they are owner occupied units, um, can also help seniors with uh, senior landlords with repairs and other and other issues that they might um, need to take care of at their house. But definitely um, look into if you're a owner occupied landlord or if you own less than four units into how the state's rental relief fund can help you because you can now actually apply directly um, for those funds. Well, another form of help, and maybe it's not quite as direct, uh, but certainly it's one of the things the city does. You have a senior save program and it looks as if that could at least help people save some money. That's right. What does that program do exactly? Um, yep, so that's run through the home center. I don't really know the exact particulars of it. Um, that is not the Office of Housing Stability, but um, the Senior Safe Program um, has been highly successful in helping seniors stay in their home. And I know that the um, Mayor's Office of the Housing Innovation Lab also has a program with seniors so they can um, rent out their home. Um, so there's a lot of programs that we have with seniors. Age Strong's also been helping with some housing issues. Um, they, they have a whole um, almost army of people that are helping seniors with housing folks. Our office also has a contract with um, a, a contract with Hearth um, over in the South End that works with seniors and housing search issues and also um, helping them with financial assistance to stay stably housed as well. I want to ask you about uh, the tenants who are not exactly in typical privately owned buildings. You have some in the units that are owned by the Boston Housing Authority and they have vouchers, or they might be in, in an affordable development that's uh, developed and managed by a nonprofit. Um, what about their situation if they're having trouble paying the rent? Sure. So people in subsidized units, um, the first thing that they really need to do um, one is they need to fill out what's called a CDC declaration form. Actually, all tenants should fill this out. Um, there is a federal evictions moratorium that goes into effect on Saturday when our, more, our statewide moratorium lifts. Um, the first thing people need to do is fill out this declaration form, which is available on our website, boston.gov slash housing dash stability. And that form, give that to your landlord, um, that will keep you out from, prevent you from being evicted, we, we feel, through the end of the year. If you're a subsidized tenant, you need to call your leasing agent or property manager to recertify your income because subsidized tenants, as you know, pay a portion of their income as their rent. So if you've lost your income due to COVID-19 or for any other reason, you need to notify your property manager right away and recertify that income so you don't have to pay that portion that you were paying before. So that's really important to know. The other thing a subsidized tenant should do is apply for RAFT, which is the state's rental relief aid. Um, because that funding, which has now been increased to $10,000 per um, tenant, uh, can help them pay that arrears. And that is very important, um, really important for people to do. The Boston Housing Authority has also signed on to our landlord pledge, but before they did that, they'd already agreed not to evict people for non-payment of rent. But anyone who was in the Boston Housing Authority, um, who lives in Boston Housing Authority units, um, they should know, or anyone in any unit actually, if you had an execution that was about to issue on an eviction prior to COVID suspending court hearings, you need to also fill out that CDC form because that'll prevent that execution from issuing until January 1st. So it's really important that you fill out that form. The city also recently announced it has another round of applications it will be taking for rental assistance. Can you tell us about the assistance and uh, who's eligible? Sure. Um, so we are um, excited and we think the timing is perfect um, to announce the reopening of our rental relief fund. The big difference is it will not be a lottery, so um, there will not be a deadline to apply. You should apply, though, um, as soon as you can. Um, it will be reopening on Monday, October 19th. All the, the application and the materials, you can submit everything online. You do not have to submit all of the backup documentation in order to submit your application. Um, so we will be accepting all of that on Monday, October 19th. You can go to boston.gov slash rental relief or call 311 or our OHS hotline in order to um, receive any information about that, about that fund. The people who qualify um, need to have been a city of Boston resident on or before March 1st, 2020, uh, have been financially impacted by COVID-19 and uh, not be a full-time student and not um, live in a subsidized unit. So those also prove that you're at or below 80% of the area median income. The um, rental relief fund provides up to $4,000 in rental assistance, which would pay for future or past due rent. And that can be combined, we're hopeful, with the state's rental relief fund and any other um, 
really funds that are available to folks to help them stay in their homes. Katie, I, I know this has been a very rough patch for a, a lot of people, but I wonder, is there anything you can tell us about the volume of calls for help you've been getting either very recently or even just since the onset of the pandemic? Sure. Yeah, so um, as operations manager at the Office of Housing Stability, uh, I keep a, we keep we get daily reports on the calls. Um, I, I do a phone shift every Tuesday, so I was on the phones yesterday, and um, we've maintained a quadruple the volume. So uh, prior to um, the pandemic, we were receiving about 25, 30 calls a day, and now we're at a little over 100 calls a day. I saw an uptick yesterday, I think because of either the governor's announcement or some of the stuff that the mayor has been announcing that our office is doing, so people are calling to inquire about that, um, but also because you, you know people are, are worried about what's going to happen on Saturday. Um, a big part of what happened with the statewide moratorium is it's been a delay of pain for a lot of families, so that's why we're hoping using all the power that we can as a city, which really we can't do a whole lot, but what we can do is provide these resources and this information to tenants. So we're glad that they are getting in touch with us um, to get this really vital information for their families, um, which is key to why we really need this ordinance to pass. And finally, uh, if uh, people do want to get <clears throat> in touch, is there a way they can do that either by phone or online? Yep, yeah, sure. So we actually just redesigned our website too, so it's really easy to um, navigate. It's boston.gov slash housing dash stability. And then you can either call 311 or you can reach us at 617-635-4200. Thank you very much for joining us. All right, thank you. That was Katie Ford from the Office of Housing Stability. We'll have more news in just a moment.